for the dark hours when you dare not close your eyes. No sleep. It's the No Sleep Podcast. No Sleep. Featuring stories from Reddit.com's No Sleep Forum. No Sleep. Join us as the sleepless hours tick past. Our next tale is entitled, Why I Refuse to Work Late, written by William Delphin and read by Reese Selby. I used to work for a marketing firm located in the Back Bay section of Boston. It was a small company, but large enough that we operated on an entire floor of the building we rented and that I was not familiar with everyone else who worked there. I started in 2007 as part of their web-based media team. For those of you who don't know anything about the marketing business, it's very client-driven. A team of producers sell our services to companies, often a little overzealously, and the designers and developers typically have to work like slaves to meet the producers' promises. This can mean late nights taking a cab home because the commuter rail has shut down. It also means coming in on weekends and working late then too. It was November of 2008 and we had a big promotional site being developed for a rather important client. I'm not at liberty to give out the details surrounding the project, but it's not relevant to the story anyway. What is relevant is that the client was pushy, as most are, and the site was complex, so I ended up having to come in on a Saturday and work late into the evening to have something ready to present by Monday. If you've ever worked in an office on the weekend, you know just how different and isolated it can feel. There were other people at first, ambitious or merely driven, doing their thing, but never our paths did cross. The office was organized into patches of cubicles. We developers tend to be a little off-kilter, goofy, prone to coming in wearing t-shirts and faded jeans. The higher-ups put us in the back corner so that tours with potential clients could avoid having to explain us and our appearance to them. The corner just happened to be facing the alleyway between our building and the next one. The back row of cubicles eventually got replaced with an aesthetically pleasing row of glassed-in offices for the director of the web-based media team and some selected subordinates. But at the time of this tale, there was only her dark office and a row of grungy cubicles where said subordinates vied for legroom with piping and windows looking out at the brick facade of the adjoining structure. The lighting in our section was often dim. My co-workers liked to loosen any fluorescence that flickered rather than request a change of light bulb. My own cubicle was on the far side of the area from the beautiful brick vista, smack dab in the corner with a set of shelves. I only warranted half the space of a regular cubicle because I was the newest member of the team. Seated at my computer, a radiator warming my toes and my back to the rest of the office, I worked on the site. It was a little after midday when the producer called me to check on the status of the project. The nice producers came in and stuck around to show their support when you had to come in on weekends. Sometimes they'd go pick up lunch or dinner to reduce your downtime. The not so nice ones called and encouraged you while they went shopping or played golf. Things were going well and I told her as much. While she began droning on about a list of features I should remember to have implemented, I heard a noise behind me. It sounded like chains rattling, which I thought was an unusual sound for someone to be making, which is why I got up after finishing the conversation and hanging up and went into the kitchen area to investigate. The kitchen separated our section from the graphic designer group and was at the end of a large open hall that had several meeting rooms attached before ending on the other side at the lobby with the front desk and elevator. There was an old freight elevator right by the kitchen side of the hall, but we usually avoided using it because of its tendency to break down. There was nobody in the kitchen, 
but as I turned to look down the hall toward the front desk, I saw the door to the freight elevator coming to a close. At the same moment it closed completely, I spotted a co-worker heading for the lobby elevator. They turned at the sound of the freight elevator door shutting, saw me, and waved. Don't forget to turn on the security alarm before you leave, he said. Am I the last one here? I asked. He nodded and headed for the elevator. When I got back to my desk, the phone was off the hook. I chalked it up at the time to me being forgetful, but I wondered now if it was something else. The line was making the <coughs> noise you hear when you've left it off the hook for too long, so I hung it up and went back to work. It got dark out and I still wasn't done, so I called my wife to tell her I would be working late and to go ahead and eat without me. As I hung up the phone, I heard a creaking sound, like door hinges. I was feeling a little creeped out by being all alone, so I got up and went back to the kitchen area to see if someone had come in. If they had, and I had left before them, I wouldn't want to activate the alarm. Between the cubicles and the kitchen is a very tight hallway, which is where the restrooms are found. As I passed it, I saw the men's room door coming to a close, like I had just missed someone going in. I waited in that spot for about five minutes, trying to look nonchalant about standing around, like I was trying to do something, instead of just watching to see the person come back out. Finally, feeling increasingly anxious, I walked down the dark hall and slowly opened the men's room door, with the planned excuse of, what the hell, I had to go and this is a bathroom. The bathroom wasn't just empty, it was pitch black. The lights had been out since I came in that morning, and nobody had turned them on. Walking into pitch black unexpectedly like that can really put you in a state, let me tell you. Suddenly being blind when you were able to see just a moment ago, it was like the air got sucked out of me. <gasps> and I realized I was holding my breath because everything was dead silent, and my ears had sensitized in the hope of catching even the slightest sound. I stood there a second, and then turned on my heel and got out of the restroom back into the hallway, where I clutched the wall like I was afraid it was going to fall away and leave me back in that infinite blackness. I wasn't even thinking about whether anyone else was watching me at that point. I couldn't tell you why I was scared at the time. I just was. I did not like being alone in that office. I knew that right outside was a brightly lit city, but somehow it all seemed really far away. The T station was a block away. I could run to it and be home in a couple of hours.